is the hard rods, and the other is Poisson line processes and the Vibronian functions. These are the well known, both things are well known, and I am going to establish a relation between these two objects. So let me start with, um, with 10 transparencies with very well known things about um, uh, line processes and uh, bro, bro, uh, white noise and Levy Bronian functions. So uh, we consider a ballistic uh, representation of lines. We will talk about lines in R2, and that is a bijection between a, a point. A, two-dimensional point X, B, and um, to the line that is uh, X plus VT, so it's a ballistic line, is T, X plus VT. So uh, here you have um, the relation. So this, this is the plane B, X, and this is the plane T, X, and you have that this point B, X is mapped to this line here, okay? This is by I, so the, the angle, is supposed to be the, the tangent of this uh, of this angle, okay? This point, this this negative speed here, and this is the position that coincides with this one. Okay, so it, this is a representation of uh, of lines in R two, and then uh, we can consider a segment AB that is a two dimensional segment, something like that. So this is A and this is B. Sorry, and uh, and we are considering now uh, the set of lines that cross this segment. Okay, this is called uh, a b bar. <clears throat> now suppose that this uh, segment is oriented, so I put an orientation in this direction and define the, the speed uh, quotation r as quotation marks of uh, of the segment, and then define uh, the, the lines that are crossing from right to left, that are this line, for instance, and the lines that are crossing to, from left to right, and I call uh, A plus minus, A B minus. So this is, is the lines that are crossing from right to left, and these are the ones that are crossing from left to right, okay? So these are sets of lines. So you are considering all the, the lines that cross in one sense and the, in the other one. Okay, now I will in, uh, introduce also a mark. So we, I think that you have a, a line XB and I, in, I introduce a mark R that is also a, a real value, but in principle, you can think that it's positive because for some uh, interpretations, it's nice to be positive, but it can be anything. And, and let consider a mu a general uh, space locally finite. That means that uh, for each, uh, for each cylinder, there are only a, number, a finite number of points. Okay, or it's, it's integral, it's, uh, it's, it's locally finite, something like that. Because I, I am here in, in this plane. So I, I here I am in the plane Vx and another coordinate that is uh, R. And I am asking that in each uh, parallel, this is supposed to be straight lines parallel, and, um, and I only have a, a finite number of points in this cylinder, okay? So I have some uh, decay, fast decay for the velocity and also for the, in the other coordinate for the, for the R, for the mark R. Okay, now I consider a Poisson process with, with this intensity mesh, okay? I can think that this, uh, just a Poisson process in R3, or you can think that this in R2 plus the mark, it's the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now I, with the same measure mu, I uh, define market line quite noise. That is a Gaussian process uh, omega on Borel sets of uh, R3 that satisfy that uh, omega of A is a Gaussian random variable with variance mu of A. And the covariance of omega of A and omega of B is just the the measure mu of the intersection. And this measure mu is called the control measure. Okay. And now from the, now I consider uh, Brownia, uh, distance B and R2 and define uh, this Levy-Brownian surface or 
the Brownian function or the called it Brownian motion with uh, n parameters. That is uh, also a Gaussian process from uh, a Gaussian surface from R2 in, in R that uh, intersects zero. So is zero, is zero at the origin of R2. And then the covariance is given by this expression. The, the covariance of eta two b-dimensional points A and B is a half of the distance from the origin to A plus the distance from the origin to B minus the distance between A and B. And this is equivalent to say that the variance of the dif high difference between A and B is uh, just the distance between A, a and B. So if, if D is uh, just uh, the Euclidean uh, distance in R2, this uh, is, uh, and you cut this surface in a, with any plane perpendicular, then you will get the Brownian motion in any direction, okay? And in, in this case, in, in the non-homogeneous case, you will get a plane change of, uh, of Brownian motion. Uh, you will give a representation of this levine brownian function surface given due to sensor uh, that uh, is the following. You take uh, omega is uh, line white noise, defined it before, yeah, and define uh, the surface eta of A, A is a d-dimensional point, as the measure, the random measure omega of the set of lines crossing the segment uh, between the origin and A, okay? You define it like that. So by definition, the, the law of eta of A will be normal with uh, variance, is centered normal with variance mu of OA, and the covariances will be, after doing the of computation, will be mu of OA my, plus mu of OB minus, minus mu of AB, and hence, this uh, eta will be levy brownian function for the distance DAB equal to the, to the measure of the set of lines crossing the segment. So, uh, if you go to the literature, many people call uh, this, um, this random surface levy chance of field. Uh, now, I call here Lamp QH all because I learned from some transparencies from him. Uh, he exported this idea of construction of uh, the levy brownian function to Poisson process of lines, and then uh, in the following way. So if you have a market line uh, x, v, r, you can construct a surface saying that uh, the plane is divided in two, in two pieces, and one piece is at high height and r, and the other piece is at high zero. And you put the piece at high zero is the semiplane that contains the origin, and the other is at high r. Okay. Uh, since you want uh, the step is from zero to, uh, to to vr, if it is negative, you uh, you put always the 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 zero at high zero. Okay. And then, if you have a configuration X of lines, you define a, a surface. C, depending on X, is just you sum all these steps function. Okay, and then you will get a, like, a, then, then you can compute the, differ, the high difference and then you, you will have that, that this, uh, you, you consider the, the set of lines crossing the segment AB from the, from the right minus the, the set of lines crossing from the left. Okay, here is a use of notation because the line is defined by x, b. Okay, here is a case of two lines. Suppose that you have only two lines. So uh, uh, this line is x, v, r, and the other x prime, v prime, r prime. So here is x height zero because uh, this zero belongs to, to the semiplane for those, for those two things. Then in this place here, you have height minus r, here you have height r, and here high difference. Uh, R minus R prime. Suppose that you now have a Poisson uh, market line process with intensity that is epsilon minus one mu. 
and, uh, and call it X epsilon and define the empirical surface associated to X epsilon just as before, but you multiply it here by epsilon, okay? And then the, uh, consider the measure mu uh, with this correction R here. The phi, phi here is a um, test function, okay? So this is the definition of mu. Then it's immediate almost to show that uh, the high differences for the random surface scaled by epsilon converges as epsilon to zero to, to mu one of a b plus, so to the measure of the segments that cross from left minus those that cross from, left, from the right. This is immediate from, uh, from the law of large number for Poisson process. And if you do fluctuate, you want to fluctuations, you just uh, center with the limit one observation is that the, the expectation here is always the same for all C uh, epsilon of A. And, uh, and then you uh, normalize with epsilon to the one half. And then you have a proposition that tells you that the limit of this eta epsilon, this discrete or empirical measure eta is surface eta epsilon converges to levi bronian surface, but now with the control distance that will be uh, mu two AB that is, you are defined here, okay? Mu two is just multiplied by R two. This is, this can, and this is uh, also uh, follows finite dimensional, if you take any finite dimensional set of points, then it's just the central limit theorem for Poisson processes, okay? Well, nothing. Okay, second part of the talk, how, how much time? Uh, so 30 minutes. I talk only 10 minutes? Ah, very fast, okay. So uh, hair rods. Uh, a space uh, rod is, um, is the same uh, vector as before, but uh, why now? Uh, so y is the position, v is the speed, and r is the mark that will be, in this case, will be the length of the road. Because I, I will, this, this uh, vector here represents this segment uh, with the speed v, that is like a decoration, and r is, an, is just the, the length of the road. So, a configuration, a road configuration is something like is uh, depicted here. Okay. And so eta uh, y, uh, gothic y will be the set of uh, hard rods configurations such that there is no uh, road intersection between two rods in the configuration and is a space uh, locally finite like, uh, like uh, before. No? So that in that band, uh, there is no, there is only a finite number of, um, of points. <clears throat> okay, so a rod uh, travels at the speed uh, v, a rod y vr travels at the speed v in absence of other rods. And the collision rule is that uh, two rods that share a boundary point, like in here, so they are coming like that. Uh, with colliding speed, swap position. So in the, in the moment that they touch, they interchange positions and speeds. So this is before the, um, the collision, and this is after the collision. And I call ut of y the configuration of the hard rods at, at time t. But this is well defined if you have a, number, a finite number of rods, because you can define the uh, Define and the, the decide each, each collision at different times, but um, but it's not elastic collision. No, it's not elastic. If if you uh, consider all uh, same uh, length, then it's elastic. This is a small um, generalization of uh, the hard rods problem. That is, I, I will give you some uh, reference now in the question. In a moment. Okay, let me uh, do the. There is always a discussion if time is going down or up. So here, here time yeah. is going right. 
And then, so, so here I have the space between the vertical and time in the horizontal. And the, this is just a manual simulation of what happens. This road is coming at this speed, and this road is coming at this speed, and they collide here, and then they interchange positions, and this continues at this speed, and the one continues at this speed. Okay, so this is the, the this I took the, from a paper by Bouchol and Duval is a simulation of trajectories of hard rods all of the same size. Okay, so here you have a, this is a, this is time and this is space. Well, the the idea is of the workshop and also this talk is is to do hydrodynamics of this this thing. So uh, the idea is you start with a macroscopic intensity G that goes from R3 to R plus and define a measure uh, G of phi as, um, as this, the measure with density R times G of Y dr. okay? So it's like a, and then you take a family of random configurations with distance, uh, inter rod distance epsilon, but then you multiply uh, the, the length of the rod by epsilon two here, and define this empirical length measure. So instead of doing uh, epsilon minus one in space and epsilon minus one in time, I brought everything already at the microscopic, uh, at the microscopic uh, scale. And then I have things that are uh, at epsilon, the, the intensity is epsilon minus one. Since I am in point processing R, I, there's no, no reason that you need to go to minus one, epsilon minus one in time and space. So time, time and space are, um, are order one here, but the, the length of the rods are order epsilon and the intensity of the process is order epsilon and minus one. So the empirical, this is the empirical, I call K typewriter, K epsilon T of phi, well, the empirical measure for the process UT of Y epsilon. Okay, and then you assume, I, I will be very floppy here. So you, you assume that the, at time zero, this, uh, this limit converges to this G that uh, you are giving initially. And you want to show that at time t you converge to some evolve for, for some function, so some measure gt that is to is the evolution of that. The, the, size uh, of, the hmm? distribution of the size of the rods is are not depending on space. Yes, it's yes, depending on everything. Mu is a general measure. But, the, but uh, yeah. But later I will take a Poisson process with this mu. This is a, it's non homogeneous in any direction. Okay, then, um, okay, then you want to, to characterize the, the, the first GT would be uh, the density associated to, to GT in this way. No? Okay, this, who, who did this essentially uh, was uh, Boldrini, Dobrushin, and Sukhov in 82, and they show a version of this limit with GT being the solution and show that. Uh, GT is the solution of this Cauchy problem, where you have a transport equation, but the, the, the transport coefficient V is the effective velocity of a rod, Y, and this effective velocity depends also on the function. So the function has all this <laughs> here, see, looks simple, but in fact, you have all this inside here, right? And you have this initial measure, um, G0. In fact, what they did was to, to they give some, some um, weak law of large number for the flux of, uh, for the flux of particle for the current or integrated current, and then computed this limit, but the expectation of the empirical measure, not the empirical measure as, as random variable. And also you, you can show that the, if you, consider a target rod that is a position at time t of a target rod initially at y v0 at the origin, then it converges to some, uh, to some function that also satisfies uh, the differential equation. 
that depends. So the, the, the local the local speed depends on the rods that, that are crossing from left and right and give you this uh, effective speed here. And here you have a um, simulation by also in the same paper where you have uh, the orange the orange uh, line is uh, the speed that would be would have the hard rod if there were no other speed or other rods and this is the red thing is the actual uh, trajectory of the of the road and and the, the set of speed they satisfy this uh, collision rate theorem so the speed of the uh, of a particle that is going at speed d at uh, position y uh, will be will change proportionally to the difference of uh, another particle that is colliding at the same position with speed d tilde with some uh, with some value that will depend will be this one will be um, will be r tilde that is the length of the other rod because you will jump for, by the length of the other rod and the sign if you come from left or right you will get a positive or negative then uh, 15 years later came uh, Baldrini and Suho uh, in the, and in an issue but that was in in honor of Dobrushin, and they uh, compute the um, the fluctuations of uh, the empirical measure the, of the expected empirical measure with respect to to the limit GT, and they showed that uh, that that is given by some HT, and this HT satisfies the second order nonlinear differential equation. And what I am going to show here is that, uh, in some sense, if you take not the expected value, but you take uh, the actual empirical measure and, uh, and see the difference with the expected value and multiply by epsilon to the minus one half, you converge to something that depends on this uh, Brownian function. Okay, let me give you a couple of uh, background. So this started with uh, Eisman, Goldstein, and Leibovitz, in, and then Eisman, and Leibovitz, and Marro in the 70s. And uh, then the paper I quoted about the beginning of Grushin Suhov, and then you have to, it's in, impossible to not read a book by Spawn in 91, that he has a chapter on hard rods. And then um, the fluctuations. I thought, but this is now, this is coming up to this uh, days today. So in, in physics, uh, you have uh, papers by Doyon, Yoshimura, and Koff in 1970, uh, 2017, where he have, they have uh, simulations of hard rods. And then this uh, generalizes hydrodynamic limits. That is uh, what I was talking before. And, but also there are papers by Kabul, Shadan, Spawn. This is just a small list. There are many others. The Spawn uh, a couple of years ago, and Doyon has a lecture notes on, on GAD. Well, I arrived here because uh, with uh, Nguyen, uh, Roland Wang, we were working in this box for system. Box pole system is uh, just a cellular automata that uh, presents soliton behavior. And, um, and these solitons, and then we say we started just by, by chance in some sense with this. At, at some point, we said ah, well, it would be nice to see what happens with the, um, with the target uh, solitons. And the target soliton satisfies uh, an equation that is very similar to this one. To the collision rate theorem. The system is much more complicated, and to, to find the, this thing, in fact, the, the, the final Riesman, Riesman is, a, is, a, is, is similar to the one that you get to obtain that, but, um, but we did it in, in, a, in, a, com in a more complicated way since without the uh, um, using the fact that you have a soliton decomposition such that the soliton components, they have a linear behavior. They, they move uh, linearly like 
we will see that it happens also here. Now I, I try to tell you how you relate the um, first part of the talk with the second one. So the, the secret is the free gas. The free gas is something that was used also in Dobrushin, in the, in the first paper by Dobrushin. This is, uh, the free gas is just, uh, you have particles uh, at time zero, each one has a, a speed, and then each particle goes ballistically at this speed and ignoring the other part. So easier dynamics than that, impossible. So this is the configuration at time zero, and this is the configuration at time t, and I call, if x is the, the set of points at time zero, then t, t, x will be the set of points at time t. Uh, the, this, this free gas was studied by Harris, Spitzer, they were looking at, um, at, the, at the target particle, that means that uh, it uh, collides with the others, okay? And then uh, in this case, they, they, I think that they finally proved that, uh, I don't know in which paper, that this converges to Brownian motion. When if you tag a particle and you start with uh, homogeneous um, space. Uh, you start here with a homogeneous Poisson process. <clears throat> Well, uh, so this, this transparency is to argue why you should start with Poisson process. If you start with the Poisson process at time zero for the free gas, you, you have a Poisson process for the free gas at, at, at time t. And this is the measure, the intensity measure was mu, then you have a mu t minus t, the measure at time t, okay? And, and if, 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 if I call p the distribution of this x, uh, P will be a TT invariant, implying that, uh, implying that no? if X is, has distribution, uh, if X has distribution P, then TTX has distribution also P. And, and this is true for, for the, see, P is a Poisson, homogeneous Poisson process, this is true. But if you have a Poisson process that is not a homogeneous, and uh, and let it uh, and let it run. Then locally it will converge to some to the Poisson process that is homogeneous. It's like um, so. So why start with something that is not Poisson process? I, that is what happens with the, the paper by Dobrush. And they had a, a measure that was uh, locally interacting, say at, at level epsilon in, in my in my scale here. Okay, so the, that, that the, you converge to Poisson process if you start with, uh, that, that the invariant measure must be Poisson processes are in, in similar papers this, discussed in Stone, in Dobrushin, and then Ake and Spong has had a paper uh, where they show that using the entropy that the measure must be uh, Poisson with a less hypothesis. Okay, so the, the relation between the hard rod configuration and um, the free gas is given by two operators. One is dilation and the other is contraction. So if you have a hard rod configuration and you fix a point A here, you contract by pushing, by, by keeping the interdistances by eliminating the, the rods, okay? So these this distances are, are conserved. This is a contraction. Reciprocally, if you have a point configuration, a free gas configuration, you delay it by keeping also the interparticle distance and by pushing in the two directions. Okay, so the interparticle. Okay, and, and then I, I call the mass between A and B of the configuration, the total length of the rod of the configuration in this interval. And then you define the flows, that is uh, the, the, the amount of mass that cross from left to right and from right to left. These are, these are sets that are the, the particles that will cross in the free gas. This is something that you compute in the free gas, but you, with the, um, the decoration of R. And then the net flow, you just look at the particles that cross from left to right minus so the mass crossing from left to right minus the mass crossing from right to left or vice versa. Okay, and then you have a, a relation between the, the hard rod dynamics and the uh, free gas that is the following. You, you, you get, 
so you get a, a, a hard rod configuration Y you, uh, with no particle at the origin. And then you um, compress it. You do free gas evolution and then delay it. Okay? And then you will get the, the, the hard rod uh, configuration at time t, but uh, it will be uh, shifted by the amount of particles that cross at the origin, because each time that the particle crosses the origin, you, the origin in some sense jumps to the right. So you will get the bad origin. And you, in, the, in this sense, you have to, um, you have to, uh, to correct. This is a shift. And O T of Y is the position of the origin, say, in the in the free gas. So here I have a picture that says the following: you have the configuration Y here, then you compress, then you free gas evolve, find this configuration, then from here you um, delay, and and then you have to to shift everybody by this amount here O T. Okay. And then you will get the, the configuration. Okay, it's this the same thing that I did here for OT, that is here, the trajectory of OT. You can do it for any, any other particle. And, uh, and you see the target particle will move like that, that this corresponds to, 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 this, uh, to this here, sorry. So the, the original particle with this red one, when it meets this jumps to the right, and then uh, when it meets here, jumps to the left, to the right again, and then meets here, jumps to the right, because it comes from the other side and see. Okay, so the quasi-particle will be, will be a Q plus, plus DT, that was cinco minutes, five minutes, sorry. And plus the... Okay. Okay, so this the same thing. You have a microscopic setup. You have the uh, dilation and contraction of uh, of functions, and uh, in such a way that have uh, mass conservation, and and you have the microscopic evolution for the free gas is trivial. Is this one? And then the flow also you can compute microscopically in this way. You just say the, the particles coming from one side and the other. And then you define a macroscopic evolution for the, the density G. That is, is the same as the microscopic evolution, but for the microscopic uh, operators. Okay, this G is also the mass crossing the origin. Okay, and um, okay, so the the, the, the hard road dynamics is related to the usual chance of surface. By the following picture. So here I have this um, the free gas, only, only three, three particles. And this picture is funny because you can interpret this, it as a totally planar picture and you will have the hard rod. But you can interpret that this, uh, this black, white things here are terrace and, um, and these uh, colored things are uh, steps. And so you have a terrace and steps, so you can see that the, the mass crossing here is the same as the high difference in the um, in these terraces. Okay, this is say the uh, here in this uh, transparency. So, but I think I convinced you here, and then you can show the hydrodynamic theorems uh, for hard rods. Uh, in the following way. Remember that I have here my k, k epsilon phi is uh, the empirical measure for the configuration ut of um, y epsilon. But I, instead of taking ut of y epsilon, I, I want to have um, x epsilon. Okay, but to, in order to have a x epsilon, I have to take a, part, a particle x here, a particle x here, and see where it's coming. And this particle will come to this place, okay, in the hard rod system. Well, this is the, the meaning of this y typewriter y epsilon vt. There is a question. 
Uh, yes. You know, it may have lost something. So in the previous picture, uh, so when the, the, the roads uh, uh, meet, uh, they do not uh, only exchange, uh, um, okay, so they exchange only the velocity. Velocity and shape. Yeah, and also the, the, the R. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because I had in mind. Uh, uh, so, no, okay, no. thanks. No, indeed, from this, the This was uh, the side, but. <laughs> no. Okay. No, it, 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 in that way, it would be much more complicated life. But <laughs> this, this, this way, it's simple. Uh, so, okay, so this way, VT of X is just a, a random function that tells me for the gas, free gas particle X, where is the corresponding. A hard rod uh, at time t in that thing. Okay. And then and I, this is typewriter y, and then the expectation of typewriter y is this y, not usual y. And then, um, then the idea is the following. This is taken from Baldeghini Suhoff. Uh, that, uh, that, well, this, this you can write the, the, this first part here is. Is just the definition. I am writing instead of writing in function of the y epsilon, I write it in function of the x epsilon. And then I take phi with the second or third derivative and, uh, and do the expansion uh, with respect to the, the, the regular y uh, position. Okay. And then I get three, three things here. So and now you, the, the, the thing is that here I have now something that is uh, deterministic and the random thing comes here for the second thing. So here is law of large numbers that is okay. Okay, we can prove it immediately because uh, this is just, uh, just it's a function of the points, it's the sum of the function of the points. Okay, and here I, I have just something that is the high differences of the length of uh, chains of uh, Levitt chains of uh, surface. So I know that this will converge to random field for this distance, DAB equal to mu two of AB. Okay, so you have these two, two theorems for the, the first two terms. The first is those large numbers, and the second is, uh, is converges to some function of the chains of fields for this distance. If you want to go back to the beginning, you have to take this measure mu as with uh, some density f, and then g get the related uh, f at time zero, and then do all the things. So uh, let me finish with um, some open, open problems. Herbert asked me if what happened if the particles instead of going uh, ballistically have uh, some uh, uh, acceleration. Uh, we could probably you can do everything here with Brownian motions instead of Brownian motion with drift instead of uh, of target part of, of lines. Um, periodic curves I forgot. This is some some question of error that I don't know exactly what it means. Uh, uh, now maybe yes, if you have a sign. And, same thing. and then something that really should be done in the same way is the box ball system, this, the hydrodynamics in the case that you have uh, no particles to the left of the origin uh, is known by Sasada and Crydon and Sasada. And it would be nice to understand the relation with the KDD, KDD equation and because the soliton behavior of KDD equation is similar to this one. And um, well, large deviation is always a question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for questions. Thanks, thanks, Pablo. Uh, uh, does KDV enter in, in the previous hydrodynamic limit? KDV has nothing to do with this. <laughs> we, we, we observe that have the same behavior, the solitons in KDV have the same behavior as uh, hard rods or solitons in BB and box ball system. But there are, I don't know any relation. Questions? Sure. I have a quick question. It's uh, uh, about this distance between the, your hard rod system and your the one in which you collapse everything. Yes. Do you have an asymptotic uh, behavior of these uh, different between them? Yes. 
and what it is. The, I, I don't know if I understood the question. Uh, so when you represent one with the other, you have to add these. Ah, uh, yes. I know you, you, you have a, an expression for that. This is this. Well, in this case is this one. You have x plus vt is the position is the position of the free particle, and this thing is the is exact. This is exact. Is the the high difference that is the same as the mass crossing the, the net max mass crossing the tra this trajectory. And and what is the asymptotic in epsilon? The asymptotic in epsilon is um, is this y t that has a explicit expression. So that is the mass. The macroscopic mass crossing because, because this this thing is the difference of the empirical measure of two sets converges to the measure to the limiting measure of these two sets so this so converges to the microscopic um, thing to, to the macroscopic thing i don't know if you that is what you're asking so you have the, the lowest large, you have a lowest large number for that that gives you uh, that this, and, and then probably you are asking me for the fluctuations. Fluctuations, yeah. The, the fluctuations, fluctuations, the fluctuations for, uh, give you uh, is that at uh, this one, give you uh, this Levy chance of field. But it's in uh, square root also. The square root. Okay. You want to go further? No, so I thought yes. it might be in one over four, but it's okay. Uh, epsilon. Okay. Ah, uh, one epsilon to one four. Yeah, okay, but it's not okay. But it's too big. No, I don't, I, I didn't think about that. So, any other question? But uh, um, all the results so are for Poisson. You start with the sum Poisson. I, I started for Poisson. But the Dobrushin, um, Botteghini, Dobrushin, Suhov, they have uh, local uh, gives measures, uh, oh. some attract, some repulsive measure be, be, beyond the repulsion of the hard rod. They have some report, some extra repulsion. Okay, thanks. Yes. But, uh, yeah. but uh, my argument is that the Poisson is, uh, is okay, it's enough. Because if you, even if you start with something that is not Poisson, you are Poisson immediately microscopically. Okay, so um, I mean, maybe we stop here because we're already quite late. So let's thank Pablo again.